Cash of Australia, former semi-finalist here, of course, recovering a little from uh, a recent appendicitis operation, but it's uh, sure to be a big serving, big hitting match. And watching that one, one for minute, us, gentlemen. our commentators, one John minute. Barrett and Mark Cox. Well, this really should be a big hitting match between two strong men. One raised on clay, the number 15 seed, Guillermo Viles, and his opponent, Pat Cash, raised on fast grass. So on the face of it, you'd expect Cash to win fairly readily, particularly when you remember that his opponent is 33 years old and Cash at 21 in the prime of life. Mr. Nevertheless, Viles, Pat Cash, as Steve Ryder has told you, is recovering from a uh, an appendicitis operation which was done just three weeks and a day ago, 22 days ago, on the first day of the Beckenham tournament, which Pat had entered as a preparation of grass court play for Wimbledon, and obviously he had to miss that engagement and spent the time in hospital having the operation done, but came out two weeks later and was practicing again um, on grass almost miraculously fast but the operation had been done so carefully with the surgeons separating the layers of muscle tissue so that nothing was cut uh, they can do that these days apparently and here he is looking as fit as a flea and it'll be Guillermo Vilas the number 15 seed from Argentina to open this match Play. Well, he seemed to cover that one quite well. Love. And I said it should seem to be a straightforward win for this chap, but uh, the server today has twice won the Australian Open on grass and indeed he started his career of big titles by winning the Masters in Melbourne on grass. Thirty love. So I don't think Cash or anybody else will underestimate him today. Love. Strong and muscular man, Guillermo Vila stands five foot eleven, weighs 165 pounds, and in boxing parlance, serves his weight. Game Vilas. First game. And really, this young man was hailed in Australia as the white hope of Australian tennis when two years ago he reached the semi final here and at the US Open. And I think, Mark Cox, it is very sad for Australian tennis that he's had this nagging back injury which was only solved after a layoff lasting about six months from last Wimbledon and solved by an operation which wasn't, a sur wasn't surgery but was the, an injection which reduced a swelling in one of the discs. But happily, that seems to be behind him. Yes, it's a great tragedy. As you say, he was the, uh, they were hoping in Australia, the standard bearer of, uh, of a new generation of tennis players. And Australia certainly has been looking for some considerable time for someone who is Cash, going to sir. carry the flag in Davis Cup. And we, of course, have particular interest in this because uh, he will be playing against Great Britain two weeks after the championship. So it's going to be very interesting indeed to see how well he plays in this tournament. Fifteen left. Well, there's a rare sight this year.
30, love. I think we're going to learn a lot about how much he has recovered from that operation when we see how hard he can serve, because that's where the operation scar will be tested. Just asking the foot fault judge which foot. Cash gets getting into the net very, very quickly indeed. Covers a low return perfectly and is ready for the passing shot. Very good racket work by Cash. Very quick and alert. 40 love. Cash is going to serve his second serve as short as this. This is the sort of response he's going to get frequently. standing well back to receive serve which is quite uh, a sensible idea knowing that cash will probably be serving a little bit below his normal full power interesting feature of this match. They've never played each other, these two, despite uh, Vilas's frequent trips to Australia. Cash much younger then. Vilas winning his titles, of course, in 1978 and 79 in Australia. One all. First service. Fifteen, all. And as with Mats Villander yesterday, Guillermo Viles, not the sort of player you would describe as an instinctive volleyer. Not a bad volleyer, but uh, he prefers to play his matches from the back of the court, though today he'll be coming in all the time. Oh, yes. Well, an excellent return for Cash, catching Vilas right at his feet. He half volleys the ball, comes Vilas too close to the net, and he's available for that lob. An easy shot, really, for Cash. Fifteen forty.
first service. Thirty, forty. Hard to believe that the computer ranks this man at 413. That, of course, entirely due to the layoff. At the end of last year, he was 67, and the year before that, he was eight. Advantage Vilas. Quite a lot of swing on this left handed serve. And at the moment, Cash is finding the timing a little bit tricky off the still slick grass. Oh, it's out. What a pity. A bad shot. A bad shot by his opponent there. First service. First service. Fault. Vilas. Vilas leads two games to one, first set. So no breaks of serve, and Guillermo Vilas, who many of yours will remember a couple of years ago, in fact three years ago, 1983, when he was last here at Wimbledon, he seeded four then, lost in the first round to Nduka Odiso, and a marvellous match late in the afternoon after winning the first two sets and uh, I think then everybody felt that we might never see him again and yet he's rejuvenated Mark this year yes it's amazing I saw him playing in Paris and he played extraordinarily well uh, such tremendous fighting spirit of course he had his battles with the game which uh, was very unfortunate and uh, there was a political struggle and a, a bit of uh, confrontation and I think that rather disarmed him he lost his uh, 
Uh, his fun in playing the game, he felt perhaps the game had let him down, and uh, he, for a period of time, uh, was not really competitive. But this year, I think he's come to terms with what the uh, what has happened in the game, and he's certainly showing that uh, he's very fit, very eager, and certainly enjoying his tennis too. So it's cash one two. Well, the serve deep to the backhand side, but the return was created the opportunity to make the pass from the volley. The top spin hugging the line there. Beautiful shot on the forehand side by Vilas. Fifteen thirty. Well, the previous point, Cash had served a very soft second serve, and that double fault wasn't hit very hard either. I'm wondering whether, in the stress of match play, and it's a very different thing practicing from playing a match, he, he's beginning to feel that uh, stomach muscle. Thirty all. Sitting on the service line at the far end of the court, Richard Kaufman, who comes from Seattle in Washington, one of the two professional umpires engaged by the MIPTC. Well, you get the feeling that both men are really rather feeling their way against one another, of course, because they haven't ever played before, and uh, trying also to acclimatize themselves to the conditions. Best service. Fifteen all.
15.30. Well, that was a beautiful wrong footing shot by Cash there. Guillermo Vilas at the net, having to commit himself, suddenly realized that he was wrong and couldn't twist back in time. So a slight hint of danger, 15.30. Fifteen forty. So for the second time in the match, Cash having a chance to break Vilas's serve. Cash really showing us that he's well informed. The serve down the middle and the top spin catches Vilas on the half volley. And Vilas, yet again, he moves to the net too quickly. His nose is over the net and the lob well inside the baseline. Gave Cash plenty of time to play that top spin lob. Completely disarmed Vilas on such a critical point, too. It's break point. He's, uh, though, throughout this set, he's had most of the chances. He had two break points in the third game on the Vila serve. So he's really been uh, dominating the set so far. And he must be very happy with his performance so far because it, there must be question marks in his mind as to uh, how he's going to react in the match situation. He's played so few matches in the last 12 months that uh, to have the confidence to go out there and play the shots that matter when they matter is not easy to find. So, the initial break of serve going to Pat Cash. And the spectators quieten down. Thank you. He'll serve at 3-2. So there have been two foot faults called against Cash. Love 15. And among the spectators, four little boys from the regions there. There they are in the yellow shirts in the front of the players' area. They are playing short tennis, the game that the Lawn Tennis Association is promoting to teach youngsters the use of the racket and ball. And it goes on in Arangi Park, has done for three years now. They have a national competition with the final played here at Wimbledon. What a treat for those young fellows today. Love 40. 
playing this game a little carefully. Very short of match play. Vilas has a better backhand than forehand and look how well he gets the top spin on on the ball but this is the shot coming up down the line Vila, uh, Cash expecting the cross court and what an ideal time to play such a superb shot it's now three all he's broken back Love 15. Something of a dilemma for him today because he'd love to be able to serve flat out. At the moment, he's serving about, what, three quarter pace? Love 30. Fifteen forty. Game cash. We'll be going back to that match in just a moment just to confirm some of the more important results of the afternoon so far. And Chris Lloyd, the second seed, safely through in the ladies' singles, beating Mary Jo Fernandez 6 4 6 1. Martina through as well, of course. In the men's singles, a match resuming from yesterday. Stefan Edberg has beaten uh, Vallis Wilder of the United States. The score there 6 4 6 3 6 1. And Edberg now plays Paul Anacone in the second round. And Joachim Nyström is through against Kelly Evenden in five sets. He plays Wojek Fieback in the second round. And the number 14 seed Martin Haiti has beaten Guy Forget of France also in five sets. So, now can Cash hang on to his serve this time? He had the break two games ago and then promptly lost his serve with a very lackluster game. And he maintain his concentration. He has the advantage of the new balls. It's four three. Yeah. 
Kok. Senior will be more pleased with that state of affairs. On the right of your picture in the back row with the glasses and with his hand to his face, Pat's father, who was a very good Australian rules footballer in Victoria. And sitting just two places away to the left as we look is Ian Barclay, the coach of Cash. Fifteen all. serve into the body of Vilas and a, a reasonably deep volley there but Vilas's passing shot was too high and Cash was able to put it all away on the volley very easily. 30-15. Forty-fifteen. Well that first ace will probably cheer up Cash who's been holding back noticeably on his deliveries. Forty, thirty. Well, Vilas does have a very good backhand return, takes it well in front of his body, pushes it down the line with a top spin. Really has cash groveling for that one. But it's still forty thirty. leads five games to three well that's looking better for Australian hopes and so is the weather how nice to see a little bit of blue three five Probably remembering the last time he was out on the centre court, at the end of last year's tournament in the doubles with John Fitzgerald. They were finalists, runners up to Gunthard and to Rotzi. On the line. On the line. 15 all. So opinions differ. Brilliant. One of the toughest shots in the whole game to play. Unless you get this absolutely right, it makes it easy when if your opponent. And it takes a great deal of physical strength and good timing to meet the ball as firmly as that. The backhand smash. Forty, fifteen. Good serving from Vilas there.
still in the set. Ash leads five games to four, first set. Bit of British news, defeat for the British number 12, Michael Walker, but a very brave performance against Claudio Mazzadri of Italy. Walker lost in five sets, 7-6, 4-6, Meanwhile, out on court number six, we've got the British number six, Nick Fullwood, against Brad Pierce of the United States. Now, Fullwood took the first set there on a tie break. He lost the second on a tie break, and he's now taken the third set, 6-2, and is 3-2 down in the fourth, but Fullwood leading Pierce by two sets to one. And on court 14, that titanic battle, Bill Scanlon and Anders Yarid, two sets all between those two, and with service in the fifth and deciding set, 2-1 Scanlon leads. This is what's happening on number one court, the uh, match resuming from yesterday, uh, Ivan Lendl, the uh, number one seed in the men's singles against Leonardo Lavalier. And Lendl, having taken the first set yesterday, leads 3-1 in the second. And that match at the moment is on BBC One. So it's Pat Cash to serve for the set. 5-4. Thirty love. Remarkably good serving, really, when you consider the lack of real pace that it normally carries. He's placing it well. Thirty, fifteen. I think in Pat's mind, he knows he has to get a high percentage of first serves in today because he simply can't hit the second one with its normal kick or slice, depending on choice. And therefore, Vila says we've seen many times has a chance of making a really telling return against a second serve. Well, bound to be a little bit anxious and tight because he's so short of bench play. A third double fault. So set point to cash. Well played. Game by set cash. Six games to four. After 38 minutes. Keep your minutes. seats, please. Play continues. Second set, Vilas to serve. Well, Vilas really had a little bit of a chance there against a slightly inhibited opponent. Um. 15, love.
30, love. Curiously enough, both men having trouble with the top spin backhand returns dipping to the feet. Forty, thirty. Well, it's the sort of thing that happens occasionally on grass, the complete mistiming of the return as the ball sh shoots and skids through on serve. Okay, Bilas. Well served. First game, second set. Well, I'm sure Cash is very pleased to get that first set under his belt. It's uh, a long while for Cash to have to wait to get any significant wins. It's the Wimbledon final last year when he really played a match of any major consequence. He had six months off with back injury, the most unfortunate last 12 months, and has played a few singles matches in uh, the early part of this year. But uh, he did represent Australia in the World Team Cup in Dusseldorf and had uh, two wins on clay courts against Lassick and Schmidt. But those are the only two wins that he's had in a period of 12 months. And so there must be a major question mark in his own mind as to whether he feels he can Time. win. That confidence that's so necessary when playing the game, he has to sort of rebuild. It's not naturally there. But the first set, the way he's playing, I'm sure must be giving him a great deal of confidence. Quiet, please. Players are ready. Thank it's you. An absolutely splendid afternoon now. The court bathed in sunshine, lots of blue sky. The sort of day we'd like to see more often. Cash to the spectators taking a little time to settle down. Please take your seats behind the stands. Thank you. Please sit down. Yep, that's you. And, uh, Mr. Cash has <laughs> in indicated who is the offender. But the score, love one. Fifteen, love. Thirty love. 
first service. First service. Thirty fifteen. Cash spent a great deal of time building himself up physically when he was forced to rest with the back problem. Uh, amazing doctors in Australia. 40, 15. Second service. <laughs> Game cash. <laughs> One game all, second set. So cash will be still very content with the way the match is running, playing within himself and still containing the number 15 seed. Love 15. Fifteen all. Topspin lob, which uh, has been created by the fine return there, the opportunity for it is becoming a familiar feature of this match. And Vilas is going to have to, I think, just stand just a little bit further back. 1530. 30 all. Thirty, forty. Another occasion, I think, when you can see clearly that Vilas is not an instinctive volleyer, and yet he knows he must be in the forecourt. He dare not let Cash dominate the match from the net. It's something of a dilemma for him.
Cash leads two games to one, second set, and by one set to love. Well, both these men, Mark, have served their countries well in Davis Cup. Pat Cash here was really the mainstay of that side that led Australia to its first Davis Cup success in 77 when they won in 83. And a couple of years earlier, it was uh, Vilas taking uh, um, Argentina to the Davis Cup final where they actually lost to Sweden. Yes, well, of course, Vilas has been around uh, very much longer than his younger counterpart. Vilas is 33 years of age and he really has to rely very much more on experience now, I think, in these sort of matches. He doesn't have the weight of shot. And the problem that he has uh, right now with uh, Cash is if he doesn't get his first serve into play, his second serve is dropping rather short, and he's very much on the defensive with that first volley. And as you say, he's not an instinctive volleyer, but when you're on the defensive and you're not an instinctive volleyer, that, uh, the pressure absolutely mounts. But he's trying everything that he knows. He's varying the pace of the serve. He's serving wide and then into the body. But I think his uh, younger opponent is superior in too many departments. It's 2-1 and a service break. Well, our little friend seems to be back. He was around the other day. Triggered off the uh, automatic line call system then. Very love. Well, the serve, a little short, gave Vilas plenty of time to play the cross-court backhand. And the rather cash was rather hoping, I think, that it was going to go out. 30-15. who are not bred on play like Cash is, is that you get into a mental state that is very difficult for you to sustain. You have to have short, sharp rallies, which you don't normally like. Well, this is sheer uninhibited returning of the serve there by Vilas. He met the ball so early, and he came over the top of it and hit a super return. leads three games to one, second set. I think when the draw was announced and we knew that this match would take place, a lot of the players felt that this might be an upset because Cash, in the normal run of things, if he'd been playing regularly and had a lot of match play, would have been seeded himself. Cash is starting to see the ball like a football, particularly on the backhand side. And look at this shot, the beautiful angle, cross court, not hit very hard, but perfectly executed.
15 all. Just cleaning off the bottom of that shoe, and we'll see the way he does lose his foothold as he goes to check here, chasing wide, and the little sliver there brings him to his knees. 15 all. 15, 30. All. So a second ace from Vilas to match the two served by his opponent. Advantage Vilas. First service. Advantage cash. Game cash. Cash leads four games to one, second set, and by one set to love. Well, Cash is really up for this match. He's uh, applying the pressure all the time, particularly on the Vilas serve. So much so that Vilas is getting a little bit impetuous on his first serve and missing an awful lot of first ones. But quite clearly, in Cash's mind, this is a very important match to bring him back into the international tennis scene. He's uh, ranked 
13 on the computer and only came into the tournament by virtue of being a, a wild card. So he's got a long way to climb on the international computer. And we saw in the last game an instinctive reaction when he Time. missed uh, his lob, which was a wonderful shot, but perfect tactics, just out, in fact. A perfect shot to play, but it was just out. And that little skip there illustrates how hyped up he is for this match and how important he sees it. But he's certainly playing very competently indeed. His two service breaks, having won the last four games. Quiet, please. He leads. Thank you. He leads 4-1. This is the perfect tactics, wide to the backhand, and then Vilas is so far out of court, nowhere near can he get to that cross-court volley. Perfect grass-court tactics there. Or? Well, unfortunately for Vilas, not enough of Cash's first serves have been as short as that one. And a slight misjudgment, the ball landing on the line. Leads five games to one, second set. Six of the last seven games falling to the Australian. And a little bit uh, of desperation in the last couple of points from Vilas, who had the greatest chance of all to break the serve before the change of balls. Serving now to stay in the set. Oh, yes. Well, he went to strike that ball well in front of him. He took it on the rise there, met it beautifully firmly which is the way to return, if you can time it that well, on grass. Fifteen, thirty.
34. Cash couldn't believe his luck, but Vilas has obviously decided to stay back on his serve. The last couple of points. Missed a relatively easy shot for him. 30 all. Forty. Well, he looked happier at the back of the court, but until he mishit that one to give Cash set point. That's out. Deuce. Advantage Vilas. Game Vilas. Cash leads five games to two, second set, and by one set to love. And Mark, really, both these players have got a problem to overcome within their minds, haven't they? Yes, well, we've, we've talked about Cash's uh, problem, that he's coming back from an injury and needs to build up his confidence. But Vilas also, I think, is thrust into an environment here where he really doesn't uh, enjoy playing. Uh, simply because the rallies are so short. He likes to play on a surface where he can develop the rallies and, and his own strengths can, can come out of his game. One of his strengths is patience. But here uh, on the fast grass courts, uh, the style of play that's going to be successful is the, is the one which is going to be the attacking aggressive game. It's not the sort of style of play Time. where you have to create the openings. The openings are created almost instinctively and that the openings tend to come from the net. And it was interesting that last game where Vilas, you made the comment, John, certainly looked very much happier by serving and staying back. And incidentally, he did win that game. And uh, he certainly had a much happier disposition about him. And it's going to be interesting to see when he serves the next service game whether he's going to pursue with those new tactics. But the situation is now that Cash has the opportunity to close out the second set at 5-2. Fifteen love. Oh, Vilas thought that was a fault. He'll accept the umpire's and linesman's decisions without any hesitation, Vilas. One of the finest sportsmen in the business. There's the gentleman who gave it as good. 30 love.
Vilas was very quick to move round the forehand. Look how well he moved to the forehand there and top spun that ball right down the tram line, catching Cash at his feet. Very quick to see where the serve was going to be, Vilas. 30 all. Here's the difference of the instinctive volleyer and half volleyer. The return equally as good as any that Cash has given to Vilas, but look how well Cash can cope with the ball to his feet, just dropping it short for a winner and a set point. <laughs> well, how <laughs> could he miss that? Vilas. Advantage cash. Slightly heavier first serve that time when he needed it. But he is holding himself well in hand that first delivery today. Set point number three. Six games to two. Cash leads by two sets to love. Third set, Vilas to serve. And those first two sets has taken on an hour and 13 minutes. And I think, really, you'd have to say that Cash is playing within himself, containing the number 15 seed with a more Quiet, natural please. grass court game than Vilas is. Thirty love. Thirty 
30, 15. Sensible tactic there, straight at the body, and perfectly legitimate. Thirty all. Well, as Mark Cox suspected, he has decided to stay back, and it's given Cash the chance to take the net position where he wants to be. So they're both happy. First game, third set. British win to report, and a fine one from Nick Fullwood, the 22-year-old British number six. He's beaten Brad Pierce in four sets out on court number six, a match that included three tie breaks, and Fullwood got through 7-6, 6-7, and he plays Matt Anger in the second round. We're at the, uh, almost at the end of that marathon out on court 14. Bill Scanlon and Anders Yarid, match point for Yarid. Game set and match Yarid. Called out and the number eight seed goes through in a very tough evenly balanced match in five sets. And the score, 6-4, 3-6, 6-3, 5-7, 6-4. And Yared plays Eddie Edwards of South Africa in the second round. Meanwhile, the British number one, John Lloyd, is out on court number two. Let's check on the score there. And Lloyd took the first set 6-3 against Christo Stain and is in charge of the second set as well. 5-2 up. Time. Meanwhile, on number one court, Lendl leads Lavalier two sets to love and 3-2 in the third set with a break of serve behind him. So it's cash to serve, one love, two sets to love. solidly indeed and interestingly how well he played that high backhand volley indication that his stomach and his injury perfectly strong <laughs> 15 all
1530. Just such backhands as that that led my friend Dan Maskell to describe that backhand as the best he'd seen since Labour, when I remember in 74 he won the Masters down in Melbourne on grass. He bounced back over the net. A very awkward shot to play. Had, he, had he fouled the net and touched it with either his foot or any part of his body or clothing or racket, of course, he'd have lost the point. And he was allowed to reach over if it bounces back across the net. <gasps> 40, 30. leads two games to love third set and the Australian tightening his grip on this first round match playing well within himself <laughs> 15 love Fifteen all. Fifteen thirty. Caught by the pace of the forehand from Cash down the line there. <laughs> the net court judge there just having a blow on the head from that reply. Right. Second service. Forty, thirty.
Okay, Vilas. Another body blow for the unfortunate netball judge. Cash leads two games to one, third set, and by two sets to love. Well, Vilas just managing to hang on to his serve there. But uh, not very convincingly. News from court number two, a further progress for Britain's John Lloyd. He's taken the second set against Christo Stein of South Africa, 6-2, and he leads by two sets to love there. And Cash certainly making the adjustment well on the centre court. And uh, playing with great confidence. And I'm sure that Neil Fraser, who I'm, is watching somewhere... Oh in the centre court will be delighted that his key man uh, is playing so well because quite clearly Pat Cash is going to be the anchor of the Australian Davis Cup team in the forthcoming tie against Great Britain which is going to be held here at Wimbledon on court number one in just about three weeks time so if he's uh, Cash to serve 2-1 Third set. Fifteen love. Forty love. Seems to me that Pat Cash is beginning to open his shoulders slightly more now on that first serve. Short 15. serve comes. Vilas is ready, waiting, and eager to hit rasping passing shots. But it's still 40 15. First service. Stretching beautifully for the serve and the high volley. The ball taken well in front of his body. And look at that, a little drop shot. Beautifully played. Great control. In fact, it just clipped the top of the net. It's 1-3. Love 15. Seemed a little bit doubtful about that call, the the umpire here, Stephen Winyard, wasn't about to overrule.
13. Well, way out of court, Pat Cash recovers exceptionally well. Magnificent get by Cash. Again, right out of court, hustling there, just managing to get his racket onto the ball. Remarkable get by Cash. I love 40. Yes. Second service. Game cash. Beginning to fall apart now for Vilas. Cash leads four games to one, third set, and by two sets to love. Strike me, it struck me, Mark, that the fourth double fault there from Vilas signs that this fine old warrior is beginning to sense that perhaps his time is up. Yes, I think uh, possibly he realized that long ago, but the, uh, the great thing about him, he's per persevered very, very hard indeed. He's tried everything that is possible for him to bring himself into the match, but realistically his opponent has far more equipment uh, than Vilas. And interesting to see that uh, Cash is so mobile, quite clearly no sign of the injury, and here he's taken wide and plays a topspin shot down the line. And it's remarkable that Vilas got his racket on the ball and even more remarkable that Cash was able to make any type of shot at all, let alone a winner. Reminds me somewhat of Becker in last year's final. You're quite right, John. Both, of, uh, both Cash and Becker are very similar in that regard, highly acrobatic. But the racket head control is absolutely superb when their body is out of coordination. They still are able to control that racket head. So it's 4-1 now to Cash in this third set. Fifteen all. Had plenty of time there, Cash, because he's spent so many hours drilling with the balls being fired at him while he's at the net. He reacts instinctively. 15 off. Oh, it's good then. Amazing, actually, how Vilas gets his racket onto that return of serve, let alone playing this shot. Looked as though it was going way out wide. Look how high that ball is over the net. But the topspin really pulls it down into the court for a superb winner. 15.30. 30 all.
Vilas is not about to give up. Superb return, but this is the shot. Cash thinking he's going down the backhand side, left the gap down the forehand, and Vilas took it to give him a break point. Advantage cash. Well, it was a beautiful length serve swung into the body of Elias, an awkward place from which to left handed to play it underneath his left armpit. leads five games to one, third set. So Pat Cash, who first came here in 1982 and won the junior event, is now beginning, he's now beginning to look as if the rejuvenation of his game, rebuilding of his game after the long layoff has passed its first hurdle. Love 15. Well, Pat Cash, so often dictating the right type of shot to be played, does so beautifully here. That hoists up little gentle lob, complete winner. Vilas way out of picture. Hey. Fifteen, Thirty all. Well, he's clinging on by a slender thread here, Vilas, but he'll fight till the last gasp. You never know, something might happen to his opponent. Forty, thirty. Game 
Vilas. New balls, please. Cash leads five games to two, third set, and by two sets to love. Well, creating all the openings in the match, because he has the, has the shots to do that. The aggressive game is the ability to take the ball early. The thing that he's been able to do so effectively throughout the match is return Vilas's serve early and catch Vilas at his feet. I don't think I've ever seen a player forced into half volleying so often, so regularly throughout a match as Vilas has been today. Well, problems are quite considerable for Vilas. It's hard to see him managing to get out of this match. But as John Barrett said, Hi. he's the sort of player who's going to try till there's the very last breath within his system. <laughs> the spectators quite clearly enjoying this match. It's reached a significant stage now where Cash has the chance to close the match out, serving at 5-2. I think that was meant to be a lob from his opponent there, turned into a gift. Thirty love. Yes, just took the line. Slight miss hit on the volley from Cash Thirteen here. Ball. As we see him come in, the volley isn't cleanly struck. It was a slightly woolly shot, giving that valuable extra couple of seconds, or rather split seconds, for the pass. 30 on. Cash keeping very cool under some good defensive pressure from Vilas. The importance there, keeping the ball deep to Vilas. Deuce. Last. 
Tschüss. But once again, the slightly extra weight of serve is enough to discomfort the returner. This is an incredible return of serve. It's hard to imagine that Vilas knew what he was doing. It was purely instinctive, that backhand down the line, because it was an excellent serve. So it's break point for the third time in this game. Advantage Vilas to get him on a fast plane to Mexico. leads five games to three third set started that game well enough led 30 love but perhaps played a little bit safely and feel like taking his chances quite beautifully <laughs> love 15. Probably everybody around this court and VLS surprised by that shot. Love <laughs> forty. So now Virtually certain, one would think, that we're going to see another seeding casualty, the number 15 seed, triple match point down. First service. Three sets to love, 6-4, 6-2, 6, six, 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 And a delighted Pat Cash there. Having got through a very awkward first hurdle, he came in, remember, as a wild card and met a seeded player. But I suppose if he could have chosen which seeded player he was to meet, he might well have selected Guillermo Viles, who is not at his happiest on grass, despite those Masters wins and Australian wins on a very different type of grass from these. And for Viles, 
Well, I wonder whether we shall see him again out on these lawns. 33, nearing the end of his career, one thinks. Though I'm sure he'll go on delighting us on play. That may be the last appearance on the centre court. So another seed goes out after the defeat of Kevin Curran yesterday. Meanwhile, next door on court number one, we've got the number one seed, Ivan Lendl. He's two sets up against Leonardo Lavallier. <laughs> 